Well, first of all... Because it's busted. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not busted. Thank you for joining us on Tybalt's Apprentice. Enrique is joining me again. It seems like yes. you were just here. <laughs> Never mind the same clothes. Yeah. Anyhow, uh, so we're filming multiple episodes. We're doing this whole thing just a little bit differently than we have in the past. Um, Want to keep things coming out on a more consistent basis. So, um, today's topic is Work the Raid Mother. Oh, now, I've no. talked to, she's so much fun. It's it's Awful. a fun, fun deck is what I think. Um, and I gave it a bad rap last time, talking about it being a bad deck. Um, if you've watched, it's a good deck. The, if you've watched the channel before, you um, you know how this deck came about. It is a glass cannon. It was designed to go wide with creatures and fireballs. Um, I narrowed that down to just fireballs. <laughs> so I want to talk a little bit about uh, what makes it work, how it works, and why it works for me. Finally, that's the last thing I want to talk about is why this deck works for me, and it's a little bit different than um, some of the other decks that I have. So, about how many decks do you have? Um, let's see. I, I, I have about um, eight decks. Eight? Yeah. Maybe ten. Okay. Yeah. I've got 30. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, uh, but they're living decks. And the reason I keep talking about them on the channel is because new cards come out. I make changes to them. Um, I am playing a little bit more often. I'm playing here at Game Hub in Manhattan Beach, who are kind enough to let us film here. Um, and also at Collector Legion. Um, so I'm getting in about four games uh, a week or so, you know, oh, nice. maybe yeah. more or less. Um, and I don't like playing the same deck over and over again. Um, this is one that pretty consistently wins for me though. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the reasons that it wins is, well, first of all- Because it's busted. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> it's not busted. <laughs> One of the things that, that works to its advantage or to its favor is that it looks like with a six casting cost creature, Wart the Raid Mother, um, two hybrid mana of either green or red, um, four colorless. Um, it has two abilities. When Wart the Raid Mother comes in, she brings with her two 1-1 one, one green and red goblins. Mm -hmm. um, and each green or red instant or sorcery that I cast has Conspire which means I can tap those creatures to get extra effects. Um, six mana would normally be um, a hindrance, mm -hmm. but uh, in a perfect world, with a perfect draw, uh, she could be on the turn, she could be on the table turn two. It would take a god draw, it would take something like uh, forest. Yeah. Yeah. Um, actually, where would we go with that? Actually, let's start with this. That's the second turn is the forest. First turn, mountain, soul ring, fellwar stone, elf. Oh gosh, yeah. Second turn, forest, and now yeah. worth the raid mother's on there. You got four there bodies. You go. Exactly, easy. I don't know why you thought that was busted. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but that's a one a in a million. Bit. That's a one in a million hand. Um, but at any rate, so the other thing that it does is it puts lots of lands, lots of lands on the field. Mm -hmm. um, the cards that do that are, let me go through these first of all, and actually it is the, um, the fireballs that end the game. And of those fireballs, I think the most interesting of them, because of course you have Blaze, You've got Devil's Play, which is, I think, a personal favorite of yours. Oh, yeah. Oh, gosh. <laughs> you go for that flashback, too. Yeah. Um, the Immolating uh, Inferno, Rolling Thunder, Bane Fire, and Fireball. But the ones that really make this work, I think, are the Star Storm, Fall of the Titans, and Comet Storm, all because they're instants. It can be played at instant speed. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's really good. Very handy things to have. I think out of those, I think uh, Jaya's uh, Immolating Inferno is, is my favorite. Is a favorite? Yeah. yeah. Just because, you know, uh, it's no additional cost to get more than one target. Right. 
and then you know with conspire exactly you're, you can pick up to six targets or three targets you know yes twice twice exactly like it's so gross it's uh it's uh, like i said i sold it sold it short saying that it was not a good deck um because it is a great deck uh initially it was a budget deck this is no longer a budget but i also don't think it's outrageous as far as the price goes okay um having said that there are about seven other cards, maybe six other cards that put land on the battlefield. Yeah, that's something huge. like Nissa's Triumph, Brass's Bounty. While that doesn't technically put lands on, it does put treasure tokens on there. Nissa's Renewal, Harvest Season, Natural Connection, Animist Awakening, and Hunting Wilds, along with Harrow. Carol being an instant. All of these are okay by themselves, but when you now add in the conspire mechanic, yeah, just, you're now doubling those lands. Especially with uh, Harvest Season, because it's based off of how many um, tapped creatures, creatures you control. Yeah. I mean, it's so... You know, it's it's nicely costed. If you have wor the Raid Mother out, you're, you're going to have at least two tapped creatures, if not more. Yeah. Um, especially if you're going into combat, you know, then you have all those tapped creatures, and then you double it. Right. <laughs> you know, like, if you have four tapped creatures, you're grabbing eight lands. Right. Um, and then so we have gross. the other ones that add to it, such as Howl of the Horde, Increasing Vengeance, and a personal favorite, Reverberate. All of those giving me a chance to kind of exponentially grow this, along with yeah. the Conspire mechanic. We're now going, instead of harrowing for two land cards, we're now going for eight land cards. Or actually two, then four, yeah, then eight. Yeah. So, uh, it can quickly spiral out of hand. So much ramp. So much ramp in this deck. Um, one of the things, though, is really... The reason I want to talk about this, or the reason I love this deck, is because it actually plays against tight for me. And the reason I win with it, though it's aggressive, it does seem aggressive, Yeah. it protects me in a couple of ways. It protects me by not putting out a big feel, a big presence on the battlefield. Okay. I don't necessarily seem like a threat. What's he got? He's got three goblins, three 1-1 one -one goblins, and, a, and an elf. Yeah. Not a threat. I tend to get so over you think. After this, yeah. I'm not saying it's going to work that way anymore. <laughs> but you know what I mean? It doesn't make me seem like the biggest star at the table to start with. Yeah. So that's number one. Um, the second thing then is that a lot of the cards that I went in here and a revamp recently, I made instants so that it can react as instants. So even things such as the reverberate and such. Um, yeah. A lot of times if somebody else is doing a removal at the table, I can jump in on that too. Oh, yes. Help out. Get yeah. out. Or, you know, if your opponent is casting their own, um, you know, ramp spells. Sure. Like their own harrow or, you know. Why not take advantage of that? And Absolutely. Get some on my side too. So easy. And then if you double that. Exactly. Oh my god. <laughs> so gross. It can quickly get out of hand. The other thing though, um, I'm going to talk about this because I am famous, or infamous as you choose to look at it, for <laughs> infamous. playing my commander too soon. Oh, it's yeah. something that I, I should, you know, you should wait till I watch you and I watch the other core four and I watch other better players play in such a way, and you think I'd learn. I'm a slow learner. Anyhow, I watch you play your pieces that protect your commander first, and then you bring your commander out. Yeah. Um, I don't do that often. This deck forces me to do it, and it forces me to play a linear game so that I yeah. don't, I'm not wasting my time building up combo pieces. I'm not trying to fill the board. Uh, I look like very, very laid back and not much of a threat until suddenly I am. Until you're fireballing until everybody. Until fire all everybody for. 23 points twice, or I yeah. forgot. Yeah. <laughs> Not that I bring up specific games, but anyhow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
But anyhow, it is a fun deck uh, and one that uh, you should look at. The most current list, I talked about this before, this came from Budget MTG decks. Um, they are defunct, but their decks are still freaking awesome. Um, I talked to David, I'm hoping to get him on the, on the show again, um, just to talk to him about Commander and, and so on. Um, this, I'm going to actually post both of them, and so you can see what the deck originally was, you can see where this deck is. I did, during COVID, I did an update on what was there. Uh, and what the changes I made, um, like I said, in that one I sold it short for, for what it could do. Um, having more of an opportunity to play with a greater range of people, yeah. I'm seeing that it, it still works pretty consistently. So um, yeah, it's, it's a great deck. It, it, it can it can have some fun interactions for sure. Having said that, it's that time again where if you like this content, please click the like button, leave a comment below. I read and respond to all comments. If you do subscribe, please do me the favor of writing I subscribe in the comments so that I can see. YouTube doesn't always let me know. Uh, I want to start rewarding those that got in early here or that uh, have joined us recently. And uh, we're going to start doing some giveaways and things like that. So if you can do that, uh, greatly appreciate it. In the meantime, thanks for watching.